Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Good day to all of us. Ako po si Deborah Garcia and welcome to another series of lessons where you will learn not just the theories and form of the language but also the function and the usage. As you can see, we are not in our regular classroom today. It's because that classroom is a 25-minute drive and I just got my surgery so I cannot go there yet. Today, we are just going to do this lesson in my basement and I just had my husband put up this whiteboard so I think it will be good. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you've already watched the previous series with 18 lessons in it. This time, I would like you to check lesson two from that series and I'm going to put the uh, link in the description box below so that you can have a little bit of a review on how to read in Filipino. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to verify the information you've heard. And just like in English, when you verify an information, your intonation changes and also uh, pronunciation plays a very important role when you are verifying or when you are providing information. Let us look at these sample sentences on the board and then we will see if our intonation changes when we are verifying information in English and if when we are doing it in Filipino. I use the name Deborah here as an example because it's funny because in the Philippines, when you spell your Deborah like this, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, then we don't read it as Deborah. It's Deborah. And when you're spelling it the way I spell my name, D-E-B-R-A, then that is Deborah. It's the same with Joan. J-O-A-N is not Joan in the Philippines. It's Joan. And it's the same as when you spell it with J-O-A-N-N-E. We don't read that as Joan as well. So it's the same Joan. So in this sample conversation, when you say, what is your name? Look, I put an arrow down here in English. When we say, what is your, when we are asking, what is your name? We do the falling intonation. So arrow down for falling intonation. What is your name? So you say, my name is Deborah. D-E-B-O-R-A-H. And then you verify. What is your name? Deborah. So we put an arrow up here. So when you verify information in English, um, you go with the rising intonation and this one as well. And then you answer no, it's Deborah. Now when you are doing this in Filipino, we say, Ano ang pangalan mo? So we also use the falling intonation when we are asking for the name. And then you answer, Ang pangalan ko ay Deborah. D-E-B-O-R-A-H. Anong pangalan mo? Deborah? And you say, hindi, Deborah. So here, when we verify the information, because um, in the Philippines, we read it as uh, Deborah, and then the speaker said, my name is Deborah. So you're verifying if you got the spelling correctly and if you are pronouncing it correctly. So uh, we say, anong pangalan mo? We use the rising intonation. They say, Deborah. And then you say, hindi, Deborah. So now we know that when you are verifying information in English, you'll use the same intonation when you are verifying information in Filipino. So the only thing that we need to work on is our pronunciation so that we will be understood. Um, it's the same when Filipinos speak English and we mispronounce words. Um, most of the times we are not being understood. Accent is not the problem. Intonation is not always the problem. It's the pronunciation. So for example, when my friend wants to buy candy, so candy um, in Filipino, since we, we just have five vowel sounds for five vowels, um, that's why I, I put the link in the description box below for the lesson two it, from the previous series so that we, you will have a uh, time to review the vowel sounds. So five vowels for five vowel sounds. A, E, E, O, U. That's when you speak Tagalog. But there's another problem. When you are from the central and southern part of the Philippines, we only have, because we speak Visaya or Cebuano Visayan, we only use three vowel sounds, and that's A, E, and U. So when a Visayan-speaking person pronounces candy, then we would say kindi. 
So there, the, the native speaker of the English language did not understand. It's the same thing when my Canadian friend greeted the Filipinos magandang hapon, but instead of saying hapon, uh, which means afternoon, she said magandang hapon. Well, we understood it, but actually hapon means Japanese and hapon means afternoon. Same with magandang gabi or good evening. Gabi is evening. Gabi, if you mispronounce that word, then it's a kind of a root crop. It's a vegetable, taro in English. So it is very important that aside from intonation, when we are verifying information or when we are giving um, out information, we should be able to pronounce the words correctly so that we will be understood. In this lesson, you are going to see a sample conversation of a taxi driver and a tourist taking a taxi cab in the Philippines. Before we look at the sample conversation, let us have some vocabulary words first, and then let's try to pronounce them correctly. Po, usually for native speakers, because you have a long O sound, the tendency would say po, but in the Philippines, because we have a, e, i, o, u, so our O is just o, so we say po. Po is a polite expression. We always use this when we are talking to someone older than us or when you are talking to a professional or when you are talking to strangers. So you say po and it's a polite expression. Saan. Saan is where. And then kaliwa. Kaliwa means left. When you say right, you say kanan. Kaliwa, kanan. Okay? Salamat! It's a very common expression in the Philippines. It's thank you. Salamat. Now, um, in the conversation later, you will find these words. Yan, yun, uh, these two. So, iyan, iyon, and ito are actually demonstratives like um, this and that, these and those. But when it's conversational, we tend to to uh, cut them short, so we say instead of saying iyan, then we say yan, and iyon will say yon, and ito will just be to. So we contract them. So iyan, iyon, ito. Um, well, it's it's very easy to to understand in Filipino because we don't have singular plural. As long as you're holding it, you say ito. When you're not holding them, no matter if they are singular plural, then you say iyan. But when you're talking about something very far from you, then you say iyon. Taking a taxi cab. A. Excuse me, saan po ang terminal ng taxi? Sa kaliwa po, paglabas nyo ng pinto na yan. Okay, salamat. Good morning, ma'am. Saan po tayo? Hotel Okura po. San po? Hotel Okura. San po yun? Sa Pasay City po. Okay, so here's the transcript of the conversation earlier. I will be flashing these sentences and then you'll get the chance to practice reading this using the Filipino pronunciation. And the key to that is by familiarizing the five, just the five vowel sounds of the Filipino alphabet. So no long and short vowel sounds, just the five. A, E, I, O, U. And then you would be able to read these sentences naturally. Let's analyze the sentences first, though I know because I already gave you the vocabulary words earlier. You already know what this conversation is all about. So first sentence says, excuse me, saan po ang terminal ng taxi? Saan again is where, right? Where is the taxi terminal? So saan po ang terminal ng taxi? And then the answer is, sa kaliwa po. This one is at, in, on, it's a preposition. Sa kaliwa, on the left. Kaliwa. Sa kaliwa po, paglabas nyo ng pinto na yan. So, paglabas, root word is labas. So, when you go out from that door, that door, pinto na yan. Door is pinto. So, on the left, when you go out from that door. Okay, salamat. Salamat is thank you. Now, conversation B, the taxi driver said, Good morning, ma'am. Saan po tayo? Saan again? So where? 
Po is a polite expression. Tayo. Tayo is we or us. So the taxi driver being polite when in in Filipino when you are being polite you don't use the the singular pronoun. We all we always use the plural one. Tayo. So where are we going? Um, actually, for if you if you are not being polite, you can use um, you. So where are you going? But in the Philippines, when you're being polite, you say where are we going? And then. Hotel Okura po. Hotel Okura. As you can see, the name of the hotel is Okura. And then, uh, so there's a polite expression there. So, if you listen again to this question, saan po tayo? Falling intonation. And then, when the answer was given and the taxi driver would like to verify the information, she, he said, saan po? So, this one is a rising intonation there. And then, um, the speaker or the, the passenger gave the name of the hotel again. Hotel Okura po. Saan po yun? We use yun here is because um, from, the, from the site where the driver, where the taxi driver is speaking, he cannot see the hotel and he doesn't even know where is it. So that's why we use yun. It means something that we cannot see or very far from us. But here we use yan is because the front desk um, can see the door. So that and this one is like that, but uh, it's very far. The place was very far. So san po yon or iyon. And then the, the passenger said, sa Pasay City po, sa Pasay City. Now it's your turn to practice saying these sentences. We are going to have a role play. I will be the tourist and you will be reading the part of the front desk and the part of the taxi driver. Conversation A. Excuse me, saan po ang terminal ng taxi? Okay, salamat. Conversation B. Hotel Okura po. Hotel Okura po. Sa Pasay City po. So what do you think with that exercise? Were you able to read the sentences as naturally as possible? You can also try reading my part. Practice more. In the next lesson, we are going to have a short paragraph and then we are going to try reading it um, correctly with the Filipino pronunciation and we will learn more vocabulary words. And that's all for today. I hope you learned something. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, please don't forget to like this video. See you again in the next lesson. Bye!